This is the Celebrity Authority Show. Please welcome your host, Sam Cawthorn. Yeah, very good. Super excited here today. We have Craig Johns, direct from Canberra, here on the couch. Thank you so much for joining us, Craig. It's a pleasure to be here, Sam. Craig, you are a thought leader. You're an expert. Uh, you're, a, you're a speaker in leadership performance, but specifically breaking the CEO code. What does that mean? So breaking the CEO code is all about shifting people from this unwritten CEO code that they need to do more, they need to push longer, they need to stay till the end of the day, they need to be striving for excellence all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's shifting that into a position where rather than burning themselves out and burning out their team to actually leading a sustainable performance and energy throughout their day and throughout their career. Because the leaders are the ones who role model the behaviours that affect the whole organisation and therefore society. And it all started from when I was quite young where I always wondered why people weren't happier, healthier and hungrier for success. And, you know, for me, I always wondered how, how I could actually make a difference. Yeah. And then I realised I needed to be spending time not trying to go to people individually, that's too hard. Let's work with the leaders. Mm. And the real, the tipping point really came in uh, on the 12th of June, 2013. And okay. uh, I woke up, got out of bed like I normally would and fainted and was out for over five minutes and unable to move. And here I was, you know, relatively still what I thought, fit and healthy, but however, probably put on a few kilograms and and was you know, working some extremely long hours. And I found myself in the emergency room flatlining quite often. And you know, I've been working 70 to 80 hours a week and we realized I'd done it for 302 days straight. And so- And, th and this, this isn't unusual though. I'm sure there are other people out there mm -hmm. that, that are constantly just pushing themselves to the limit and that's what happened to you. Yeah, so you know, performance is not about doing lots it's about doing little things effectively and that's beautiful that's very well explained yeah. and, and i think what is what people try and do is they schedule their life around work mm. and so they schedule time rather than scheduling energy and performance and so if you look at most people's schedules especially a ceo will quite often see it filled up with maybe 70 to 80 percent of their day filled up in meetings and so they're not actually getting time to actually relax and recover at all in between those meetings, or they're not really getting that chance to prepare for the meeting effectively. Uh, so, you know, we've got a, we've got a massive problem. Absolutely, we have a we have an energy problem. In, now, in now can I, um, I want to deep dive into this a little bit more, but I, I can hear a little a little accent in your voice. Where, where whereabouts are you from? What what was the upbringing like, Ray? Uh, so I grew up in a town uh, called uh, in, in a province called Taranaki in New Zealand ah, New on a Zealand big farm. Beauty. <laughs> and so for me, I grew up in a space where you know you're out on the farm, you get a lot of time to uh, reflect on things and, and be very creative and come up with ideas. And I was very fortunate to be surrounded with a lot of people in that community who were highly successful um, in the sport field. And there were a lot of um, All Blacks come out of that region, a lot of really And they're pretty, high, they're pretty high performers. Yeah, and, and, but it's Black. a relatively small province, but it's very proud and it loves being outdoors. You know, we have a two and a half thousand meter mountain, which you can see from the whole province wow. uh, with two peaks and then two thirds of it surrounded by coastline. So you're in nature the whole time and it's mm. really inspiring and people just get out and they're adventure. Like all New Zealanders are, are kind of pioneering and adventure type mm. people. And so you just get ingrained in that. And from a very young age, I, you know, I was playing field hockey in mm. you know, competition from the age of four or five and you know, swimming from the age of three. And, and I was fortunate to end up in some very good teams as well. So in my field hockey, uh, I was playing premier field hockey at the age of 13. And our team at that time, when I came in, I never lost a game for five years. And it continued on, and it has the record in New Zealand for the longest wow. streak without losing. Congratulations. And it, somewhere around 280 games. It's phenomenal. <laughs> Town of 5,000 people. And, you know, sometimes we had only 10 players. We didn't even have a full team, let alone reserves. But we knew how to win. Yeah. And there was just this amazing belief in each person and, and connection. You know, we had disagreements, but 
we were all aligned in where we were going and we weren't just trying to win we were trying to change the game yeah and i think that's what leadership's all about it's mm-hmm. not just trying to to have a business that runs well it's trying to how do we change the game and change the world with our business and i think that's really important yeah i, I totally agree look at the moment it, it, it's a bit of the in thing at the moment being a ceo or, or or the like so for ceos out there that are wanting to become a ceo or even a current ceo that is feeling a little bit of burnout in order before they flatline the say you know what what you've been through what we just say to them and and how could we how could you just very quickly just teach us how we can break our own CEO code. Yeah, definitely. I think we need to shift away from CEO being chief executive officer to chief energy officer. Very good. And so in breaking the CEO code, one of the phases in breaking the CEO code was called performance. Huh. And so I teach people around the three steps to being a chief energy officer. Okay. And it's all around energy. So the first one is to schedule your energy. And we call that CEO periodization. Now, periodization comes from the sporting world, and actually before that, it comes from the library world of cataloging. Mm. And it's all around how do we put things into periods of work and then recovery. So with CEO periodization, it's it's around proactively planning our schedule in our life around working three times, resting one. So say, for instance, uh, during a day, we will work for 45 minutes and then have 15 minutes of rest or recovery. I mean, you don't stop working, but you switch off from what you're doing, allow your body to reset a little bit, and then you can go back to that high performance. If it's over a whole year, we might look at periods of three months where we might have more high intensity stress, lots of projects, we might be traveling, well, not right now, but normally we'd be traveling. And then we have like a month where we might reduce the number of meetings, reduce the hours we work, um, spend more time with our family. We might go and do some stuff with the children if you have children. Uh, so it's just making sure that we load energy and then reload energy. I love it. So the first one schedules. Yep. The second one is to uh, is to invest in our energy. Great. Okay. And that's all around high performance habits. So CEO performance. It's around the performance habits, and it's all around creating boundaries a lot of the time, because what we do is we tend to spend way too much energy. And we end up going into negative energy. So it's around creating performance habits and reducing the negative habits. So things like setting a digital sunrise and digital sunset with our, with our emails and our wow, phone. Wow, that's really good. Um, to make sure we switch off and yeah. give our, our brain a chance to relax. Mm. Um, it's things like also, you know, um, taking away contamination from your workspace or your home space. So say you come home from work, quite often people will take their bag and their laptop and stick it on the table. Well, now work is now at the dining table. So it's things like, okay, let's take that bag and put it into a cupboard in your in an office or something like that. And that then gives you that cue and that trigger to go, you know what, now I'm off work. Mm. Uh, making sure you don't put the cell phone in the bedroom and put it somewhere else. Yeah. Because even though it might be turned off, it's still you've still got this connection yeah. to it because it's right there. Yeah. So you don't actually sleep effectively. Yeah. So boundary, the next one, third, third step. And then the third one is around... Uh, renewing your energy very important. and you know the importance of being able to renew that energy and also ensure that you inspire the energy and that's called CEO presence now CEO presence is around how you intentionally set the energy for the day for you so what is your intention for the day what energy are you going to come with mm-hmm. how are you going to show up when you turn up to work or show up for your family or show up for yourself when you go to the gym in the morning or what you do in the morning Then it's around how you set the energy of the room. So when you walk into a room, what is your intention for the people in that room? For the what is the outcome you want? So what energy do you need to bring to create that? Now it's not always around high energy and being crazy. (laughs) It's around sometimes it's a calming dynamic influence energy. Sometimes it might be we need to put some fire in the belly energy, right? (laughs) So it's about curating that. And then the third one is. What is the energy of the people that you lead and influence? So what is the energy response you want to create from Mm. with uh, with them? Mm. That's really good. Uh, Craig, I find you to be fascinating, not only from your background in New Zealand, but also the 
the, the depth of uh, information that you can, re and even transformation that you can help CEOs from around the world. I could have this conversation for many hours, but look, we don't have the time. But look, just before you go, we have this bit of a challenge that sure. we do for all of our uh, all of our uh, you know uh, people that we host here, and it's called the the ten questions in sixty second challenge. So, Craig. Do you accept the challenge? Born for this challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. All right, Craig, your time starts now. Favourite colour? Baby blue. Baby blue, of course. Uh, Favourite food? Hybrid, uh, fusion. Fusion. Fusion, fusion. yeah. Favourite cele celebrity? Uh, I would say at the moment Will Smith. He's very creative and I love what he's doing online. On, on social. Oh, he's phenomenal. Favourite actor? Favourite actor would be... Uh, I used to really love Robin Williams. Mm. Favorite professional speaker? At the moment, I would say Sir Richard Branson. I just love his energy and enthusiasm and his balance in life. Yeah, yeah. And just holds yeah. the room he, so he well. Is it's brilliant, cool. isn't he? Favorite book? Favorite book at the moment would be. I really like Atomic Habits. Mm. Okay. Who, who wrote that? As uh, James Small. Okay. Favorite city? Favorite city, Taipei. Favourite drink? Favourite drink would be water. Ah, Favourite pizza topping? Uh, chili and lots of it. <laughs> really? Nice and hot. And Craig, if you could be an animal, which animal would you be? An eagle. Why an eagle? Because you can soar from above and you just it, you have this calming influence on people and you have an observation of yeah. what the world's looking like yeah. and see the future. Oh, mate, that is awesome. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Celebrity Authority Show. That was awesome. Well done. Thank you.